to Career Corner, where we answer your career cues. My name is Lucas Kaufman. I'll be your host this semester for this podcast as we interview specialists across disciplines and pick up tips for your career journey. Joining me today are Brielle Long and Cooper Rothman from the Center for Career Exploration and Development, here to answer all your questions on how to succeed in the new school year. Cooper and Brielle, welcome. Thank you for having us today. Yeah, so excited to be here. Wow. And uh, why don't you tell the good folks home a little bit about yourselves? Sure. So I'm Brielle Long. I'm the Career Engagement Specialist for the School of Humanities and Sciences, and I'm also an alumni and graduating in December 2022. And I'm Cooper Rothman. I'm the Career Engagement Specialist for the School of Music, Theater, and Dance, and I am not an alumni, but I'm an alumni of University of Delaware. Go Blue Hens. Go Blue Hens. All right. Well, let's get into it. What do you guys do at the Career Center? You know, change lives, make dreams happen. But, I mean, day to day, I think it's just working with students on what their goals are, uh, where they want to end up after college if they don't know, you know, having that conversation. And I think just kind of demystifying a lot of, like, what that's going to look like and, and kind of breaking it down step by step. Um, what would you recommend, uh, uh, the biggest piece of advice you would give to a first-year student trying to succeed academically? So how I see it, and when I think about what myself when I was a first year, I was like really into comparis- c- comparing myself to others, like whether that be on social media where you see like your friends going to different schools and they're succeeding, or that be with the people you see like around you in your class. And I think we all assume that like everyone else is doing it right and I'm the only one like struggling right now or I'm the only one doing it wrong. And I think that's obviously, I don't, that's not true. And so to me, like the biggest advice that I could say is just, study how you like to study or you know prepare how you like to prepare because so many people will tell you like how the best way to prepare but it really does depend on like your individual personality and how you best learn when you enter college you always have had it in your mind that like grades are your number one priority like if you don't get a an a plus like like what are you doing right so this actually talked a little bit more about how instead of focusing so much on what grade and like what numbers and letters you're being given, focus just more on that content itself and how you like how you're experiencing it. And that will give you a better outcome in the long run because you're learning how to learn, really. Um, and college is the time to do that. Everyone has their own learning styles. So instead of focusing, of course, grades are important, but instead of focusing solely on that, really expand your horizons a little bit. And uh, do you have any advice for students who might feel like they're overwhelmed by their current course load? Yeah, I mean, to me, and, and a lot of it comes down to like how you schedule your time or how you like kind of section it out in your brain. So for me, like the best way, like I think of a class as like a mountain. Like if you look at the syllabus, you're seeing the entirety of the mountain from like 500 feet away. And so of course you're going to see how far you have to go. And that's very daunting at the, at the moment. But I think when you break it down to like the first hour of that hike up the mountain, you can start to think like, oh, well, I can do that, you know, and like maybe the first assignment. And so for me, that's a good way of like breaking it down, making it a little bit more surmountable. Um, But that also comes down to like how you schedule yourself. Like, can you schedule one assignment a day? Like that would be a, a nice way to do it or, you know, whatever works for you. But yeah. Yeah, I definitely found it very helpful when I was in school to actually schedule in chunks of time where I would be working on my homework or studying. So i I was, I'm big with planners. I love using calendars. So I would have my classes scheduled in there. I'd have the time where I was working scheduled in there. But in between those chunks, I, and after those chunks, I would always put in the time that I'd be working on my schoolwork. Awesome. Now, uh, the, the Career Services Center, or the, the, the Center for Career Exploration and Development, is, um, I think to a lot of students, a pretty a pretty daunting place. You know, you know it has to do with your career. You might know there's resume help, but what are some other resources that you offer students here on campus? And I think that's you. You actually make a good point with the name change, like being that it was Career Services, now it's Career Center for Exploration, meaning that like we're trying to make it more broad. Like the exploration process can take a lot of different forms. Maybe it's just like a conversation with someone about what your goals might be, or how you know what you like or what you don't like. Um, and so it's less about maybe like your formal career and all of these expectations, but just having that first conversation. 
Yeah, we really try to get people to know that we're not scary. We're a very fun group of people. <laughs> we don't bite. And so we've really been trying to target those first-year students and get them through our door as soon as possible. Um, and one of the resources that we have in our office is a four-year plan. So it's very manageable steps that you can take each of the academic years that you're here at IC so that you're prepared for when you're graduating. And uh, will that – will you uh... – does that include kind of like specifically diving into degree works and picking specific classes? Um, it doesn't necessarily go into um, scheduling the classes. We can talk to you about some of your, what your interests are and like what classes you have on your schedule. Um, but most of the scheduling component will be more of an academic advisor. Uh, but within that first year, we explore a lot of the um, assessing yourself and then exploring what options are out there. So evaluating what are your interests? What are you good at? What types of things do you value for your work in the future? Um, and then exploring what options are out there that relate to those things. Um, so that could be through informational interviews, for example. So we can help you talk to real life professionals that are out there on the in the field already working, learn about their day-to-day -day jobs and see if you can relate to them and if you would be interested in learning more about what they do and see yourself doing that in the future. And uh, is this a, a walk-in service or do you, do you have to schedule office hours? How, how does somebody uh, come into the Career Center and, and get this, this help access to these resources? So that, that's a great question. Um, we actually have a peer career advisor team. So they're like students that go to Ithaca, um, therefore your peers, and they'll be able to help you out with any drop-in services. So those are 11 to 2, Monday through Friday, you know, plugging that in. Uh, and, and so that's a great way to just drop in, you know, get help whenever. But you can also definitely schedule an appointment with us to go over it more like individually and more like we can plan for when you come and, and get all that ready. So. Yep, there's a career engagement specialist that's assigned to each of the five schools at Ithaca College. So as Cooper said, he works with music, theater, and dance, and I work with humanities and science. Um, so anyone is welcome to book an appointment with us anytime. Now, uh, speaking of what, what students like to do and what they want to do, um, extracurricular activities play a huge part in, in everybody's college life, you know. Uh, what is the importance of extracurricular activities on a resume, and how much focus should students be putting on these activities? Extracurricular activities are actually very important, and a lot of times people come into our office and they're writing a resume, and they say, I, I have no experience, I'm not sure what to put on here. And then we start to chat a little bit and realize they're actually in like two or three different clubs on campus and that's very valuable experience. Um, there's something called the NACE competencies, which are skills that employers have identified as being most important when people, for new, recent graduates, when they're entering into work. So these are generally more of soft skills, such as like teamwork and communication. And a lot of these really valuable skills will come from people's times in their extracurricular activities, especially if they're in leadership roles. So we always encourage people to try to be on e-boards as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And I think like it's your first experience working with a team, first experience working with other people. And that's priceless. Like you can't, you can't make that up. And a lot of times, like, the employer or, like, whoever you're, like, interviewing or, like, giving your resume to, they'll be like, oh, I also did that. And that's, like, kind of a, collect, like, a connection point, too. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are some other mistakes you see uh, students often making uh, in, in their first year of college or even in the, uh, the later years of undergrad? Not engaging with us soon enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the biggest thing. We definitely have a lot of seniors that uh, come in and say, I wish I would have come in sooner and it happens and we can help them for sure and we'll work with them on where they're at. Um, but we really try and emphasize that the sooner you come in, the more prepared you will be for sure. And so my biggest advice and like mistake is that you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to like get out there and meet people. And it really is uncomfortable. I think like we have to normalize that discomfort that you feel where you're like, this is not something I've ever done before. Or this is you know, not a situation where I know everybody around me like high school was, where you, you like, had all your friends around you all the time. Um, it, it takes time, and you don't have to, like, you know, push yourself too much, but definitely going out of your comfort zone is something that I would recommend. Networking starts small, so it starts with just getting to know your peers and the other people around you, and especially just the faculty and staff here on campus. Utilize the faculty's drop-in hours um, if you don't understand something in class or if you have new ideas based on what your lecture was that day. They are so happy to help you, and they were very supportive on my journey, so I always encourage people to utilize that as much as they can. Yeah. 
So a lot of aspects of, of college can be really stressful and there's things that students struggle with a lot of the time. Um, what are some of these things that you, you, you know and see students struggling with that you think could be you know, remedied by a visit to the Career Center? I think we, we handle a lot of the existential like crises and I think it's like, and that's why I love my job to be honest, is that like when you're on your pillow like late at night and you're like, what do I want to do with my life? And you get that like pit in your stomach, which again, I have felt because I went to the career center like my fourth year at school, which was horrible. <laughs> Would recommend doing it not that way. But um, I, I think that's what we were able to help with. Like, if, like the idea of what you want to do with your life is so massive and so like, hard to think about, but we can really break it down step by step, whether that's like your first networking connection or your resume or whatever. I think we can like help you kind of sleep better at night knowing like, I don't maybe I don't know what I want to do with my life, but I know the steps that I can take to get to a point where maybe I will. Yeah. So um, I know myself, um, the reason that I haven't ever come to the career center is uh, even in even in my times of uh, struggle, I felt, you know, I, I would talk to myself and be like, I know what I want to do. I, I feel like I know how to do these things. I, I can go buy a resume. What would you say to students who, do you think students who are feeling that level of confidence can still benefit from the Career Center? I'd say everybody needs help, even if they don't know it at that point. So just to come on in and even just introduce yourself and share with us how you feel and what your goals are, um, we might not even offer you any help at that point, but we at least just want to get to know you and maybe point you in the right direction of something that you didn't know existed because you hadn't had the opportunity to come in yet. I agree, and I, I have a hot take for the Career Corner podcast, but okay. maybe... I think if you're not a little uncomfortable and a little unconfident in what you want to do, then you're doing it wrong. Like I know plenty of people who are super confident and like, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a veterinarian ever since I helped that baby squirrel out of that tree like when I was five years old. And that's an awesome story and I'm like fully here for it. But I think it's so nice to like talk to them and really break down what that means to be a veterinarian. Like, have you talked to anyone that's a vet? Like have you gone through that education? Like, do you know what education you're going to have to go through? And then they start realizing, like, oh, maybe the thing I thought my whole life I was going to be doing isn't that. So, and we know, like, the the facts on, like, how many times people change their careers, especially since COVID, like, it's gone crazy where the odds that, like, the career that you're in right now will not be the one you end up in is, like, really high. And I don't know the stats. But, um and so to me, I think, like, it's good to have a little bit of nervousness and, like, maybe I don't know what I want to do. Sometimes the conversation starts with that point you made of thinking back to when you were a kid and what was it that you wanted to do? Like, what was your dream job? What did you tell people when they asked what you wanted to be when you grow up? So, you know, just think back to when you were younger. What did you want to be? How did that change maybe when you, from when you were five years old to eight years old, and then maybe when you were 13? I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be an actress. I just wanted to be on stage and performing. I was very creative. I loved coming up with new things. And then eventually when I got into high school, I learned a little bit more about business through a club called Future Business Leaders of America and then realized, well, maybe I want to be an entrepreneur and start my own business. So things kind of shifted there. And then when I was deciding on my major in college, I knew I wanted to do something business related, but I also didn't want it to be all just like numbers and like finance, accounting. I wanted that creative side, which I had when I was younger and wanted to be an actress or a singer. So that was how I then discovered marketing because it's that business side that lets you be creative at the same time. So then ultimately I ended up majoring in business administration with the marketing concentration. So even just taking people through a journey like that could be very helpful and kind of mind blowing for them as well. I mean, just for my, I, I wanted to be a mailman because I wanted to drive like those little cars around and meet people and stuff. And I don't know, I still meet people all the time. And, and mail is unfortunately a dying industry. So I And you, of to... course, wanted to pet all the dogs and yeah. give them treats that yeah, you encounter a, on your journey. That's a big part of it, yeah. And uh, on the subject of uh, uh, ourselves when we were younger, what, what's something you guys would tell your college self? So I, I, when, I, cause I, I, when I think of this question, the first thing that honestly came to mind is nothing. Because I do think that you do need to experience it. Like, it's almost like the idea of, like, if you could go back into the past and, like, you know, change, like, do something, change, like, a relationship, like, would you feel better? And I feel like, like, no, sometimes. I'd, I'd rather just, like, experience it at the moment. But my career side of me would say, 
um, to again always question like the beliefs that you think are are like you know like like whether that's I know this is the way that like my industry is going or I know this like talk to other people you know and, and see what they think and kind of collaborate with other people because the more people you have in like your space and the more people you can like hear from on that I think would be really helpful so it's completely fine to fail and I think a lot of times I was very scared to fail scared to do bad on a test or scared to not make the right impression on somebody but all of those are learning experiences and you should embrace them during your time at IC it'd probably be nice to tell my younger self like it'll be okay I think that's a pretty true pretty nice one. absolutely well Brielle Cooper Thank you so much for joining us and uh, telling us about the uh, the Center for Career Exploration and Development. Oh, killed it. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank this you has so been really much. Awesome. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. And folks, believe it or not, you do not have to wait for our next episode to get career guidance. You can visit office hours every weekday from 11 to 2 in Muller Faculty Center 101. I'm Lucas Kaufman, and this has been Career Corner. <laughs> <laughs>